Yo, welcome back to your favorite series, Unique Effects. And in this fifth part, we are gonna break down 5 absolutely insane effects that literally anyone can recreate and use in their edits. Let's jump straight into the first one. Here we are inside After Effects. You've probably seen this effect somewhere before, but I bet you had no idea how it was actually made. For this, we'll be using the plugin Tracery. Once we apply it to our footage, the effect is basically done. But of course we are not gonna stop there. We need to style it and make it look way cooler. First, I'll pick a slightly different color and drop the threshold down to about 6. For the blur strength, play around until you find something you like. Personally, I think uh, 0.3 looks great. Next, I'm turning off all the extra points, like the random lines and text, since we don't need them. Then, I'll change the look of that central point and set its color to black. There is a little checkbox that lets you keep only the elements created by the plugin. We are enabling that. After that, duplicate the layer and remove tracer from the bottom one. On the top layer, the one with just the plugins effect. Let's throw in a drop shadow with these settings and uh, of course deep glow. You already know I add it everywhere, you add it everywhere, it's not enough for debate. Finally, I create an adjustment layer and apply signal. Play around with the settings, but make sure you turn off these two checkboxes so you don't end up with the extra junk. Here are my final settings and this is the result of the first effect. Now you might be wondering, but what if I don't have all these plugins? Don't worry, every plugin I'm using from popular ones like Sapphire to niche ones like Modulation or Tracery is included in my... Well, let's just say I never told you this. You can check out on my website and grab the mega bundle where I've collected all my packs plus every plugin I personally use. Alright, on to the second effect. This one is super simple. First, we need to cut out these two girls using the rotor brush. Once that's done, duplicate the layer and uh, on the mask layer add rough and edges. Adjust the settings until it looks something like this. Now animate the border property from 0 to some absolute insane values to create the transition. Next, add layers to sharpen up the transition. And uh, for the background, apply Dissolve Luma, which creates a really smooth fade. On the second clip, we are gonna make another duplicate of the mask layer, but this time we'll freeze frame it so it's static. Shift it back a couple frames, then animate Dissolve Luma again and uh, repeat the same rough edges plus levels animation, just swapping the keyframes. On the freeze frame layer, I also apply levels and uh, rough edges, but no need to animate those. Now it's starting to come together to smooth out the transition, add an adjustment layer with tempo blur, but only for a couple of frames so it doesn't drag. Then simply duplicate that adjustment layer for the next cut, no extra work needed. Here's the result and uh, this is only the beginning. The next effect will look way crazy. So let's move on to the third one. I actually came outside for a minute, because this effect deserves a proper intro. It's one of the cleanest, most badass effects I've done, and uh, you have to see it. To start, we'll need some cool, brutal, fucked, hype visuals. I just grabbed a bunch of plugin pictures from Fail Studio, snapped some screenshots, and brought them into After Effects. For now, I'll hide all the images and uh, set up basic camera tracking, because uh, we want to drop these pictures into 3D space. This part is super easy. Select your clip, go to Tracker, Track Motion, and uh, check the detailed analysis box. After some time, it will start generating tracking points. Pick one that's visible for the wall clip and uh, create a camera. Now we can place any image into 3D space. Just enable the 3D layer switch and uh, it's in. If you wanna put an image behind a person or an object, just duplicate your video layer and use Roto brush to mask them out. Drop the image below the layer and boom, it's behind the person. Yeah, Roto brush again, I already have a tutorial on how to make it cleaner, but if you guys want, I could make an updated one with the new techniques. Drop a comment if you want me to cover that. Anyway, once you masked it, you can start positioning the images around your scene. Don't forget to make every single one a 3D layer. After some time tweaking, here's what I've got so far. It still needs work, yeah, but you get the idea. To make it blend better, I'll add drop shadow to both the subject and the images. Then of course deep glow. The images are appearing too abruptly. So I'll enable motion blur and animate their position, so they kind of fly out from behind the subject. You can get creative here. 
I'm keeping it simple. At the end, I'm pre-comping everything. Two separate pre-comps, one for images in front of the subject and uh, one for behind. Make sure each pre-comp has the camera layer inside so everything works. Then I'll apply optic compensation to both pre-comps and uh, for the final style pass, I'll create an adjustment layer with Sino. These are the settings I used and uh, this is the final result. This is the kind of creative effect that makes this series what it is. But the next one... The next one will blow your mind. We are back in After Effects and this time we are creating a clip you definitely know. First we'll cut out Bruno Mars with a roto brush and I'm skipping the details because uh, I'm sick of explaining a roto brush by now. I'll just show you the setup. We'll actually need to mask layer, you'll see why in a second. The first one, add a rare plugin called Prism Displacement, tweak it however you like, or just copy my settings. Then add a CC glass, nothing complicated here, just crank the height to 100 and send displacement over 100. Before that, I'll drop in a simple glow, just a regular one. Now for the second mask layer, switch this blending mode to classic difference. You can also add deep glow here to make the color shift, draw on hue saturation and animate the hue value. Then pre-comb both layers together. Inside the pre-comb, add another deep glow and add drop shadow to really separate it from the background. Here's how it looks. I know you're probably tired of me explaining after every single effect, so let's jump right into the next one. Create an adjustment layer and add optic compensation. Animate the field of view from 0 to about 80, and uh, don't forget to check the box here. Next, add the turbulent displays. This is honestly one of the coolest default effects in the After Effects. Switch it to horizontal displays and crank the size up past 700. Now hold the Alt and click the stopwatch on Evolution. Type in time 90, do the same for seat but type time 3. Now it animates automatically. Finally, set the blending mode of this adjustment layer to divide. It looks amazing. Though the footage I download is super low quality, so there are a few artifacts. If your results look different or too blown out, just add exposure to the adjustment layer and tweak it until it balanced out. Here's my final result. Or maybe not the final one, because there's one more effect I could show you. And if you use this one, people will start hearing you up with uh, real project offers. It's that powerful. But you know what? I'm gonna save that for the next episode of Unique Facts. 